Hello, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, episode 178. The only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after driving back from the gym. That's way too far away for now. Today I'm going to be reviewing a country album. Yeah, I said it. A country album. How many country albums have I reviewed of my 178 episodes? Zero. Now, it's a little bit tough to say that this is even a country album. No, it's by a guy named Charlie Crockett. Apparently, he's related to Crockett from Crockett and Tubbs in Miami Vice. I mean, Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier. That can't be true. Doesn't matter. Um, and uh, the name of the album is called The Valley and Other Autobiographical Tunes. And I really enjoy this record, and I'm going to talk about it. But first, I'm going to tease something. I, at two different phases in my life, went through a cowboy phase. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit embarrassed about the second one. So if you watch till the end of the video, I will show you the pictures of Sky in his cowboy phase. Now, I said this is a country album, and then I said it's not a country album. I'm all confused. So, you know, this morning I was like going through all the music I was going to listen to, and, uh, and my, you know, I was playing this and I was hearing it and I was liking it. And then my wife heard it and she's like, what is that? I'm like, well, oh, it's some of the new music I might review. She goes, that's new music? Because to her, it sounded so old. It sounded like it was classical, old country music, you know? And I was like, no, 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 it's, it's new. And I think I'm gonna review it. And she's like, but Sky, I thought you hated that. I thought you hated people who took old music and, and just kind of like tried to reproduce it in a way that sounds authentic, but isn't. I thought you said that was death. And that kind of stumped me because I do feel that way very often, that music that's intentionally trying to sound old is death. It's a form of death. Like you have to let music be new. But then I get stuck with country music. And, and I don't know. I don't know if there's any like actual country music fans out there listening to me. Um, but what the hell is going on with country music? I just don't understand. I am a complete tourist to country music. I always have been. The first time I ever intentionally listened to country music, I was in Nashville at the Country Music Hall of Fame. I got into country music by walking around and seeing that there was a lot of things about somebody named Hank Williams. So I bought the Hank Williams biography and his greatest hit CD. I read the book before I even listened to the music. Okay, so I'm not like some real expert on country music. I mean, I would then go on to buy the complete discography of Hank Williams and then I discovered Merle Haggard and, and Willie Nelson. But all the country music that I liked was a particular kind of country music, you know, like kind of like hipstery country music. Like country music where when you tell people who love country music, hey, I like some country music, and then you say those three people, they go, okay. It's kind of like the equivalent of, you know, when I was in college, people being like, you know, I don't really like rap, but I like the Beastie Boys. <laughs> All right, uh, I know what that means. Like that's a shorthand for a whole bunch of information. But what do we do with the fact that like country music, you know, popular country music now is unrecognizable from, from Merle Haggard. It has nothing to do with it, like nothing. Like, like you, there's, there's no continuity except that it both comes from the American South, I, I suppose, and that it's primarily made by white people from the South and primarily consumed by white people in the South, but not really, because like today's hottest country is all over the place. So what do we do with a record like Charlie Crockett, which makes me go, nice. This reminds me of Merle Haggard. This reminds me of Hank Williams. A friend of mine, Ron, came up with this term called vintage exploitation. Is this just vintage exploitation? Certainly it doesn't sound like anything new. The, the genre that they created to describe this kind of music is Americana. Americana. I'm sorry, but Americana, that term, that term is death itself. Americana is a, a blanket term for like any music that like would play well on NPR that, that really old people might like. But that's about it, right? Like. Americana doesn't sound alive. It sounds like, you know, some guy who's playing a free concert at the library singing Woody Guthrie songs, okay? So how did we arrive here? 
where music as vibrant and alive and meaningful as Hank Williams or Merle Haggard or early Willie Nelson or any stuff like that, like that music is dead and then modern country music is so vibrant and alive. Country music is dead, long live country music. I mean, I don't know, is this gonna happen to hip hop? Is there going to be like a fundamental break and just no good hip hop will be made? And if good hip hop is made, it'll be like put up on a shelf, like as acceptable to old people? I don't know. So the question is what saves Charlie Crockett from being dead? Because this album is not dead. This album, I believe is alive. This album, I believe, is actually excellent. It didn't bother me at all. My wife was correct in assuming, or in saying, that in general, if music tries to sound old, I don't like it. But there's an exception. What if it's really good? <laughs> well, that's the dilemma that Charlie Crockett puts forth. This album, the songwriting is really tight. Excellent songwriting. It's called The Valley and Other Autobiographical Tunes. Uh, the title track is about himself. I mean, all that I know about him, I read in his bio on, on title, you know? But like the song is like everything that you read in his bio. Like he was born in Texas and, and moved to Dallas and single mom kind of whole thing. And like he basically tells his whole story on the song and it's heartfelt and it's well-written and you feel connected to him and and, and like, the, the whole album, the songwriting is like that. It's like really tight, you know? Like every song like has a purpose. And maybe that's part of what I like so much about, you know, like early Willie Nelson or, or Merle Haggard. Like they, they write songs and they're just, you know, there's a certain formula to it, which is fine. But like just, there's always nice turns of phrase. There's always a certain amount of self, you know, self-deprecation and then just, like you feel this connection to the person who's singing. Sorry, my dog just jumped off the couch because the sun moved in my house. Around this time every day, he just jumps down from one couch and then goes to lay in the sun. Um, and, but the, the main thing that pulls this album through and makes this really a must listen is his voice. I, I spent a long time while I was on the elliptical trying to think about what is it about his voice that I like? And I realized it doesn't sound like, but it makes me feel the same way as Bob Dylan from Nashville Skyline. Speaking of country albums, which are acceptable to people who don't like country music. Um, but so, you know, he's not singing like that. You know, it's not, nah, 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 nah. you know, it's not like that, but there's a sort of in ineffable quality to Dylan's voice on Nashville Skyline, like something that's like far away and close at the same time. And Charlie Crockett's voice has that, that strength. It's a strong voice, and sometimes he puts on a drawl that's maybe a little bit too affected. But in general, there's like a charisma to his voice. It's just really unmistakable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play you the first track to give you an idea. Um, I have a lot of stamps on this album, so I'll just call this the stamp. Just, you know, he put it first, so I'll let you listen to it. It's called Borrowed Time. I want you to hear like a lot of the production de decisions here. Like there's claps, but they're really back in the mix. It sounds like they're in a room. Um, you get to hear his voice, really nice, just piercingly, it's piercingly muted, the voice, if that makes sense. You know, he's not like really out there, but it just falls through. Anyways, so let's listen to a little bit of Borrowed Time uh, by Charlie Crockett. Borrowed time. You can't stop. What's already coming? I thought you know by now. Can't you see it's sure to be trouble? You know what I'm talking about. You tried it, tried. Okay, so I hope that was enough time to listen to that. I moved the plant here menacing plant why not um one thing that this album does really nicely too is it has a lot of different solos you know so it, like that song has a fiddle solo uh other songs have harmonica solos uh whistling uh pedal steel probably my favorite actually is a baritone uh saxophone solo just i mean how often do you hear that and it's really nicely done uh that's on the song if not the fool and it's, I'll tell you a little story about the song, If Not The Fool. I looked up because it sounded so familiar. Is this a song that already exists? 
And it is a song that already exists, except it's a song that he wrote. So I don't know. So I guess he has a couple different albums and a couple different styles, like more like blues, more like this. He seems to be maybe just kind of floating around to all different kinds of Americana. Is it just me or is this creating a lot of really interesting light? This, this plant is insane. Um, there's uh, It's Nothing to Me. It's a pretty fun, playful song that does something that country music that I like does really well or folk music does where it tells a story and the story itself is like really dark. It's like a story about a guy who like gets into a bar fight and kills the guy and goes to jail. But it's just kind of got this kind of playful like nature to it, which, which I, I just really enjoy. Um, he does a version of Nine Pound Hammer, which I only know through the Monroe Brothers. I don't know who actually wrote it. And, you know, covers of like basically traditional songs from America's past could be painful. But again, he has this restraint and this quality of, of production where like the, the banjo that he uses is like kind of, again, kind of distant, like the claps in Borrowed Time, like kind of in the background and sounds almost even out of tune. Um, and, and I don't know, it, it's a really nice version. It's a necessary imitation or necessary cover of a song. Uh, it ends with the most Merle Haggard song that Merle Haggard didn't write, unless he did, I don't know, I'm no expert, called Motel Time Again. And just these lyrics are just wonderful. And at, at times, you know, it gets a little bit tiresome, the sort of like, I'm a guy on the road. And there's a song called Leaving Santa Rosa. He's maybe trying a little bit too hard to have this you know, persona of a, of a hard living, hard drinking, you know, country star. Um, but his voice is just so engaging and, and just, it just really pulls you through. So there you go. Charlie Crockett, king of the country music that's good to my ear. Um, I hope he continues to make music. I, I hope he has success. I don't know who the audience is for this. Like, I, I just, I don't know. And it sort of fills me with despair that this guy is never, you know, going to sell out a stadium. But what do I know? Oh, hey, I promised you pictures of me and my cowboy face. Of course, I'm gonna move this out of the way. That, that can't take precedence. It's cowboy face time. The first one was I went to cowboy camp in middle school. I have a lot of really terrible stories about that. And I'll tell you what, when I get to a thousand subscribers, I will tell you just my cowboy camp stories. They are filled with horror, true, trauma and horror. But here's a picture of me in cowboy camp. Cute little guy. And then in my 20s, I, after I got so interested in Hank Williams, I actually like wanted to become Hank Williams. So like I was going through a really hard time in my life. And I was trying to figure out who I was and, and, and what did I want. And so like the, the tortured, self-destructive romanticism of Hank Williams really appealed to me. So I, <laughs> I got myself a Stetson Gun Club hat and a, a pickup truck and started dressing like that. <clears throat> I'm embarrassed about it, but it's funny. I show it to my students sometimes and they laugh. Um, <clears throat> and I think it kind of underlines the, the whole point of this episode to a certain degree that like there's something wonderful in old country music, in that tradition. And we shouldn't just let it die because Merle Haggard died. <clears throat> we shouldn't just let it die because Florida Georgia Line or whatever it is, is super popular. We can't just let good music die because, because it died. <laughs> All right, until next time, uh, you know what I'm gonna say. There's the camera. <laughs>